FYF Sports. All right. Lamont and Steph here back with another uh, news video, man. We got we got some interesting news out of the NBA, man. I, I've done a couple videos on this already. Just about, uh, you know, as you guys can see from the title of the video, just about players complaining in a bubble. So I've yet to hear an NBA player, or at least a former NBA player, kind of speak up on this. And I, I just... I kind of want to hear what these guys have to say about it. I have my own perspective on it. What do you think about just like these guys complaining about the, the uh, you know, the accommodations in the bubble? I just feel like, why are you complaining? You want to play ball, just play. No one asked for the corona. You know what I'm saying? No one asked for this virus to, to come and ruin the world. Like, you just have to, I mean, that's what they have to offer right now. So you just take Facts. it. It's what it's only not even what is it two what would it be two for two two months? Yeah, three to about two, two three. Months? Well, for some teams two months because oh, some right. teams are gonna be going home. Oh, yeah, so, so it's like it was like Patrick Beverly said. He said it is what it is. Right. He says you make it what you make, make it. it. Right. You know, deal with it. Uh, Demari Carroll. He said it ain't that bad. He he showed all his food. He said they tripping about food. Yeah, but like, but it's some of the players like Demari Carroll. He showed the food. He was like, it's like a meal I would eat when I, if I go back home to my mom. That's house. what I'm saying. Some of y'all grew up on this. Don't yeah, change yeah. So, so it's like he said, it's decent food. And yeah. then the craziest thing is the player that surprised me the most. Yeah. The player that you would be thought would be the most silver spoon of them all, Austin Rivers. Grew up in I NBA grew, life. Grew up, grew yeah. up with money. Yeah. First yeah. thing he said was. He said, he said the first day, 48 hours, he said, yeah, they had to prepare meals for us. It was like prepared lunches like you're going to school. He said that was trash. He said ever since after that, he said the food's been solid. Right. He said, he said, he said, it's too many players in NBA acting like they've been fed with a silver spoon their whole life. Yeah. And they haven't. He said, you just got to, you know, it's, it's just about coming here hooping and just. Grinding. And it's always the one that, the ones that are, was really like dirt poor. They have nothing, bro. Yeah. And that's complaining. You complaining? It, on, it is the, the players that complain the most are the ones that surprise me, like Rondo, yeah. J.R. Smith, yeah, Kyle Kuzma. Don't surprise me, yeah. Um, you know, you got guys like this complaining about accommodations, it's just like, come on, man, right. stop it, man. Especially, and then what makes it even worse when I see players bringing stuff in like hyperbaric chambers and video game systems, yeah. you can essentially bring in any Anything additional you necessity yeah. that you need yeah. so that your life is a little bit better because they allow you to bring in whatever you want. So a, a lot of, I think a lot of them love this too, though. You got their own personal space to yourself. Like, I ain't yeah, hold on. about nobody. The, the, vi the videos I've seen, I see guys out there jet skiing. Yeah, they I see guys fun. out there fishing. Yeah. What? They, they, they cool. They yeah. cool. So we're going to play this video. We're going to hear what. Jason Williams has to say about the matter. For sure. To eight weeks, he will undergo surgery to repair the fracture this week. Now, speaking of Rondo, he was one of many players to post a complaint about the NBA bubble to social media in recent days. He posted this picture of his hotel room to his Instagram stories with the caption, Motel 6 Hunt. Oh, hold on. So, I, hold on, listen. I was, I was on Ticket TV, and they said, this looks like a Motel 6 room. Now, I'm going to ask you, and I know we both stay, I've, at one point in time, I've been with basketball teams, we've stayed in Motel 6s, we've stayed in cheap hotels because the team didn't have that much money. Is this a Motel 6 room from your experience? Just looking at the room right there. I've stayed in a lot of hotels. So is no. this a Motel 6 quality room? No. Come on. See, this is where... Some see, stains on the walls. Bro, there's hold on. Bro. When you go into a hotel and there's blood on the sheets because... They didn't change the sheets from the last people that was in there. That's when you know you were in a Motel 6. When you go to Motel 6 and the toilets is brown and this shit, rust everywhere. That's a fact. You, you know, like I say, this, if you've been in hotels before, this, what this looks like, it looks like a standard room at like a Holiday Inn. Like, or, or, or what are you asking for? What are they asking for? What do they want? What, what do they want that they don't have? So what I'm saying is, see, like all of the Utah Jazz players, mm -hmm. all the Utah Jazz players are used to this because the Utah Jazz owner is cheap. He's putting them <laughs> in economy ends. When they go travel, they're not getting not, nothing. They're not getting luxury, nothing. They're oh, standing. Man. But all these other NBA teams, they're used to staying in the Ritz and all that, yeah. they, all the fancy hotels. So when Rondo, Rondo really disappointed me when he posted this saying, Motel Six, and I said, Rondo, show this to show this picture to somebody actually standing in the Motel Six and see yeah. what they say. 
And it, that's why I say this is what makes them seem like they just being spoiled. They acting like little spoiled kids. Yeah. Cause you complaining about decent accommodations. I'm not we this is a, not a luxury suite or a condo, but it's decent. Has LeBron said anything? Nope. Because everybody think he's up in like the king suite or something. But, but even okay, so even if LeBron, even, even if he is, he probably bought it himself. But like what I'm saying is, even if the best players are in better rooms, mm-hmm. in the NBA is NBA is not equal opportunity. Right. Everybody's not treated the same. Right. If you're if you're one of the best players on the team, you're gonna get preferential treatment over the 12th guy on the roster. Like if you're the if you're if you're a um, Damian Lillard. You can go. You can mess around and go and get a, a DUI, and just get suspended a few games and be right back. Yeah. But if if you're the last guy on the on the bench, you just got picked up out of the G League, mess around and go get a DUI. Yeah. I guarantee you, you get cut the next day. Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm saying. It's preferential treatment in the NBA. Yeah. Based on how good you are. No, let's not get that confused. So I don't. I don't even care if they put the best players in suites. Because that's what comes with being the best player on an NBA team. That's not bad. You're not sharing a room. It's enough space. I don't know what the hell you think you're going to... Man, they're, they're, it's just... It's not all the players. It, yeah. It's it's the few players that are complaining. That you know, he, he in Hollywood, so he think he got a... You know what I'm saying? He in Hollywood. That's, yeah. But Rondo has had a history of being a crybaby everywhere he's been. Yeah, that's true. So that don't surprise me. And tag the NBA. He's not the only player complaining. Food, another of the complaints. I Joel like B so. took to like Instagram to put. Come on, no, no, no. Like we like don't chop up your, your. Listen, does what does that look like? A basic ass meal. Right. It don't look like it, it. don't look like a five star dinner, but it looked like if I had to eat, I'm not gonna complain if I get this served to me hot. I always said this. I would never change, no matter. How I'm not into, you know what I'm saying, the fashion and all that stuff. But, like, I'm not into, like, fancy-ass meals that I got uh, that potato, a little bit of lettuce, and then oh, that, and pay $200 for it. Hell no. No. I, I messed around with me and Brooklyn in Beverly Hills. We went to a, a, a restaurant like that. Yeah, and, and was pissed. Like, it was probably just, went, to, went to In-N-Out Burger, like, after that, prop. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah. Crazy. Post cool. a picture of his meal with the caption, definitely losing 50 pounds. I've got Jay Williams with me here, uh, and, and Jay, we had a lot to get to this morning, but I want to start with this. I saw what you posted yesterday, and, and I felt what you were saying, but for those who didn't see your thoughts on, on these NBA players who are being this vocal about their complaints about their accommodations, what, what were your thoughts for the audience here who's not had a chance to hear them? Well, first off, Granny, I don't think this is applicable to the majority of NBA players. This is a minute few, but I don't want this to paint a negative picture for the majority of people that are down there to go to work and to do what they have to do. I, I just think that some of the, even though... I'm going to make it clear. You hear what he just said. He said, this is, it's not the majority that's complaining. Right. And so... This tells you how media is. This is this test tells you how toxic social media is. You had a few players, NBA players, go on social media and complain yeah. about the situation. But the way social media spread it around, it'll make Maybe. you believe that everybody's Everybody. complaining about yeah. it. As he just said, and again, I trust the word over a former NBA player who has direct connections. He yeah. could pick up the phone and call 30 NBA players that's in the, in the bubble right now. We can't do that. And he keep it real, too. So that's what I'm saying. I respect what he says about the matter over people who just collect social media information. And then you just try to run with it because you want to push the narrative that these players are getting treated bad in the bubble. They were said in a playful manner. A lot of the comments that were made over the last couple of days have been tone deaf. And when you think about to what degree that the NBA has gone to create this billion dollar bubble, the protective measure in place to protect these athletes while they make millions of dollars, uh, I, I think when they make comments like that, it, it, it takes away, especially from you know everyday people who are working nine to five jobs, who are working in environments where the same protective measures aren't being taken because a lot of their employers are trying to increase the bottom line due to the money that they've lost throughout this pandemic. 
Um, and so for everyday working Americans, and I'm not saying that athletes aren't working Americans because they are, uh, but the workload is different when you look at the comparison of the two. And I, I just think that the NBA has a chance to be such a game changer in the way these athletes are going to speak about systemic racism and injustice. And by doing little things like that, even though in a joking like manner, it takes away from what the bigger cause is, which should be the cause they should be focusing on, Greeny. Yeah, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. And I think that there's also a degree of, of lack of understanding that the, the pictures that they were posting to most people don't look so bad because they don't live the way that extraordinarily rich people live. And, and hey, that's, that's, man, I'm glad he said that yeah. too because that's the biggest, that's, that's what I say, that's the craziest thing about it all. They posting pictures yeah. that to, to common people who ain't yeah. making millions of dollars, this shit look normal. So you right. basically, you basically shitting on the way everybody in the world lives. lives. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I'm looking at it like, bro, I, I'll, you know, I there was these is it's and this is and I hate to keep calling Ticket TV in them out, but it was people on his panel saying that this fool looked like jail food. I you said, obviously haven't been in jail. I, that's what I said. I said go. I said go spend a week in jail, come back, and then tell me what you think about the way this fool looks. Because I guarantee you, if you gave people in jail that meal, yeah, oh, they gonna be living good. They gonna love it. So, you I, gotta go to jail, jail, not not the you know what I'm saying, because I you know I was a delivery driver. But remember, jail. remember when we went to that prison and we hooped? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was one time we went up there. Yeah. And I said, "Fuck it, they I'm gonna." Eat. I said, "I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat one of the meals that they eat." Yeah. yeah you tri tripping? They eat like they eat garbage. Bro. I felt like I was eating uh, cardboard and uh, uh, number two pencils. <laughs> God damn. You think I'm joking, pencils, bro? They give them, they give them a silver, they they give them a silver bag. Yeah. They give them a, literally a silver bag that you got to tear the corner off of with your juice in. Your juice is in a bag. Wow. You got to tear the corner off of it and drink the juice out of a bag. One. Second thing is, you got vegetables. They give you one salt, one tiny salt in in, in pepper packet. And them is, you can't really use them right. because they'll throw them in your tray and all the juices from the food got on it. So no. you can't even sprinkle it out. So that's no good. So you can't season your food. You got some type of meat on the tray, what they call loaf. Yeah, it's not, yeah. It's, it's not meat loaf. They take the meat off of it. They call it mm -hmm. loaf. So you, you know how they make uh, hot they dogs it, and like put them in? Yeah. They, that's what that basically. But But they call it. The, the prisoners down there will call it mystery meat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's what we call it. That's true. Because you don't know what the hell it is. That you don't is, know yeah. what you eat. That's true. Mystery, and, this, yeah. and this is what they get, and then you get a dried up cookie. The cookie is usually the best thing on the tray for them, which is sad. Uh, so all y'all people down there trying to make these, like, y'all really trying to compare what they eating to prison, yeah. saying that they should get treated better. This That's what's so funny to me. And at the end of the day, why do y'all care? I said, at the end of the day, you can, I, if I'm in that bubble and I'm looking at my paycheck and I'm getting million dollar deposits, right? You can give me whatever food you want because at the end of the day, you can just order Postmates or order what you want and get what you want. Right. It's a, it's silly, man. And you pointed it out yesterday that yeah, they're not they're not private plane luxury and they're not the kind of hotel accommodations that NBA players are accustomed to. And again, that's not a criticism. They've earned their place in life. But I can see a lot of people looking at those pictures and saying, you know what really doesn't look so bad to me? Facts. You know, you know, Greeny, so it's not the Four Seasons, uh, a Motel 6. I stayed at a Motel 6 for my first four and a half, five years at ESPN when I was making $45,000 a year, right? These are things that you just, you have to do. And it is a, a difference of the Four Seasons to that, but still at the same scheme of things, when you're having your food being delivered to you and you have a lot of people out here in the United States that are struggling to put food on the table for their family, I think sometimes when you're in that bubble, 
Um, it's easy to lose perspective. And my point was that these players have a chance to do something monumental with this platform. And now you have to be more strategic and more responsible than ever to think about what is our unifying uh, POV that we're putting out there collectively and be on the same page about it. And, and that's proving to be a little bit difficult and challenging right now. Okay, I, I'm glad that you said that. And I'm also glad that you said that it is just a small number of people that we're talking about. And most of it was clearly, I yes. think, meant in jest. Let's not try and, let's not overstate the significance of it. Meanwhile, let's talk Agreed. about the significance of, of the on the court stuff. So all eyes on LeBron, and LeBron came back, we'll hear from him a little later in the show, he came back, all, he's ready to... I'm gonna stop it right there. I think they're about to talk about something else. Yeah, yeah. But, the, but the whole purpose of it was, I just wanted to hear his take on what he thought about players complaining to complaining about the accommodations yeah. in the bubble, man. You got anything you wanna say about it? I, I just, I, I... I feel uh, Jay Williams on this though. Like y'all complaining about what the fool looks. It, the fool I mean, it look looks good bad. to me. I mean, Come on, man. It's, it's not no TV dinner. You know what I'm saying? Man, like, you, I, I guarantee you, a lot of the dudes, a lot of the people that's saying that the yeah. fool look bad. Like, come on, man. Y'all not eating. Y'all not eating five star meals every day. You can give me salad. For the three months that I'm there, right. and I would tear that damn salad up, bro. I mean, that's one of my favorite things to eat too. So, but anyway, it's a joke, man. Hey, yeah. But like I said, it's it just tells you because the one thing for me, especially let's say if I'm a GM of a team, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be taking notes. I'm gonna be taking notes for all the players that's doing this complaining and stuff. I'm gonna have notes. I'm gonna be like, well, when it come time, if we gotta consider signing him, yeah. I'm gonna have to look at that. Right, because this man ain't about his business. He ain't down here to hoop. He down here where he about here making posts about the food quality. The food. We, we see where his priorities is. But you see, you can tell the players that's down there focused on winning and ready for business, and then you can tell the players that's just down there and they worried about the luxury, the NBA life. Yeah, I can see if they like just filming or vlogging like what's going on. Like, okay, this the food we eating. This the, this is this and that. No, but you're complaining about yeah, no, like no. they're specifically yeah, taking, taking pictures, pictures of the food or the accommodations, saying it's not up to NBA or right. uh, player standards because they used to five star. But they only getting three star right now. Well, hello, look at the WNBA. Why y'all complaining? That, that basically, basically, that's what the WNBA is saying. They basically saying, "Welcome to the WNBA." NBA. Right. And it's and that's not even bad, probably compared to some of the things that they have. Look, with. imagine. I'm, imagine, I'm sure they got to purchase their own food. And, and it's not even them. Imagine how do you think the G League players are eating and, and living? That's true. Now, that's go true. Yeah, go yeah. talk to some G League players and ask them what type of hotels they stand in. Yeah. And, and they stand. They don't get a room by themselves. Yeah. They get they buy themselves. They get in rooms with the double beds. Yeah, I'm good. And, and you and, and on some nights, you might have to bring the roll in bed for a third person to be in your room. Uh, I know this for a fact. Yeah, That's a I'm, fact. I'm cool on that. Yes, sir. So, hey man, look, FYF Sports. Let us know what you think about this video. Uh, comment. Let us know. For sure. Um, if you got any other topics you want us to speak about, man, just. Don't be shy to hit us up on Instagram or Twitter, any social media platform. Let us know what's on your mind. If you want to come on to the show, again, just ask. I don't care who you are. Right now, I don't care who you are. I don't care how big or small you are. If you want to get on the show, right now is the time to ask. Because, again, once we get to when we get to the million subscribers, again, nothing will be coming free. Just, just Like I said, I'm just being honest with you. Yeah. Right. Before, like, cause yeah, cause a lot of people they'll get big and stuff like that. You gotta listen to what we saying. I'm just saying, I, it, like, look at the, all you gotta do is look at the growth. We going on 8K subscribers now. It's been around 45 days, probably a little bit more than that, closer to 60, between 45 and 60 days. You know, you come back to us in two months, we might be close to 20K. All right, the price might be a little different. All right, you come back to us in six months. We might be over 100K. The price really might be different <laughs> then. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. But, we, hey, we do appreciate the support. Everybody who's subscribing, engaging. Definitely. Uh, we, we, we appreciate all that. That helps us grow. Uh, and, again, it's, it also will begin to financially help as well now that we've finally been able to get monetized. So, uh, you got anything else, Steph? Man, uh, continue to um, show support. We definitely love that. And uh, love you all, man. 
All right, FYF Sports, man, we out.